how I manage a man on testosterone replacement therapy. After I diagnose a man with low testosterone and initiate therapy, I spend the majority of my resources on management. Testosterone replacement therapy has to be considered for life. Testosterone replacement therapy is for quality of life. Of course, for quantity of life. It's so important to monitor men closely once they're on testosterone. This is really my expertise. This is what I love to do, and this is what sets me apart from any other expert physician dealing with men on testosterone. It's taken me over a decade and after thousands of patients to really see this incredible art and science of how to manage a man on testosterone because every man is different. Although there are fundamental pieces that every man has to be filed for. In this video, I'm going to present this today. And this video is for prospective patients of mine, for any man on testosterone, and for physicians as well. There are four pieces in the management of men on testosterone. Number one is the cardiac system. Number two is the sexual system. Number three is the prostate system. And number four I call other. Starting right off with the cardiac system. In the end of the day, there's only two things that are going to matter to a man in his life. His heart and his prostate. I can tell you that. Testosterone will affect the heart directly and indirectly. It affects blood pressure. It affects lipids. It will affect the red blood cells itself through a process called erythrocytosis leading to polycythemia. Heart function, diastolic function, systolic function, and left ventricular hypertrophy. These are crucial aspects to manage. Obstructive sleep apnea, and there it is. The studies have to be at baseline. You have to manage men very closely. You have to get the history, the physical exam, the vital signs. You have to get family histories. These are, these are crucial points that are missed so often because doctors either don't have time, which is the most common problem, or they really just don't understand how to do it and they're not experts. Men have to be monitored very closely with CBC, comprehensive metabolic panel, hemoglobin A1Cs, close testosterone ratios with estrogen. A delivery system and the type of testosterone is very, very important. We have gels, we have pellets, and we have intermuscular injections. Very important how this affects the cardiac system indirectly and of course directly on the actual endothelial bed of the arterial lining. We have studies for this. So the cardiac system I see is crucial and most important. And I spend most of my time in management with men on testosterone, focusing on the heart system. Number two, <clears throat> the sexual system. So all men in the end get on testosterone for libidos because it's so incredible. It works so well for a man's libido, for someone who has low T. And to give a man back his libido at any age is just incredible. Yet, the sexual aspect of managing a man testosterone is so personalized. The cardiac system is very discreet and tangible. The sexual system is not. So this is where you have to really have a personal relationship, an intimate relationship with your patient, professional relationship, man to man. And that's how I do it. It can only be done, in my opinion, by a man, getting to know another man. And it takes time. And that's how it has to be done. You can't be rushed. There cannot be a sense of urgency. Men are trusting you. Men are telling you as a physician about their personal sexual life. I, I am so humble for this. So the sexual side, 
of testosterone is really the most important because this is the quality of life stuff. So with that said, the delivery system, is it gel, is it pellet, is it intermuscular? What's the frequency, what's the dose? This is so crucial. What's the testosterone ratio with the total and the free? What's the testosterone to the estrogen ratio? How do you deal with that? Is a man depressed? Does he have other medicines on board? This is very complicated. I spend a lot of time balancing and getting to know each man independently, and it takes time. But when you can nail it down, when this can be done, and you have a man who, as I say, is happy and horny, that's true success for me. Number three, the prostate system. Very important. The lower urinary tract system. Crucial. We know, fortunately, that when a man initiates testosterone replacement and he is free of prostate cancer, testosterone replacement physiological doses will not cause prostate cancer. This is evidence-based medicine now, but it doesn't mean you don't have to manage and, and monitor him very closely with digital rectal examinations and PSAs. You have to work, I have to work with other physicians, primary care and urologists regularly. Teasing out prostate cancer from BPH and lower urinary tract symptoms. This is crucial. This is so important and not easy to do. You have to be very careful and monitor men. I see a lot of men coming to me from other physicians and anti-aging places, unfortunately, and there's no attention being uh, focused or paid to the lower urinary system. It's very um, unprofessional and it's um, something that needs to change. Number four, other. I lump a few very important aspects and side effects into this part. Gynecomastia, mood, acne, fertility, gynecomastia. Some men on testosterone replacement, even very low doses, will manifest gynecomastia. There's genetics on it. There is dose, there is type of testosterone, other medications, history of a man having gynecomastia. So watching for this and usually changing and transitioning and adjusting the type of delivery system can work. But sometimes you have to work with plastic surgeons. You have to end up sending a man to have his glands removed and this has to be only done by a um, expert plastic surgeon and I work with these doctors all over the country and the world for that matter yes sometimes you can use aromatase inhibitors yes you can very carefully but aromatase inhibitors affect the heart and you have to be very careful with that just looking at a number on paper of testosterone to estrogen and just blocking it with Arimidex that's not the answer but for some men small doses that are safe men with a cardiac system i i do do this i i take it man per man it has to be very carefully done the mood mood i can't tell you how important this is some men have depression this is real there's stress in life testosterone will affect the mood in most cases it will cause the mood to be elevated hopefully but not manic and men, in the end, go on testosterone for mood and libido, and that's what it really is. But sometimes men on testosterone can suffer short tempers, if you will. Sometimes men can be aggressive. I've seen this over the years. Sometimes very bad stories I've heard, and you have to stop testosterone. There are men that realize they can't take testosterone because they just get too aggressive, and that's unfortunate. It has to be man for man. It doesn't mean there's such thing as roid rage. This has nothing to do with it because these are not steroid doses. But even men on stable physiologic doses of testosterone can manifest irritability and an unstable mood. Very careful. Acne. Some men, especially men that have a history of acne through puberty, I've noticed over many years, will manifest moderate to worse acne. With that, adjusting the dose, the preparation, and I found that topical doses of acne preparations work very well. And sometimes I have to work with dermatologists very closely. Again, I have to work 
as I manage and the difference versus my practice versus other doctors that prescribe testosterone, I work closely as a team leader with other physicians because that's what it requires. Acne. Fertility. Some men, young men that have congenital or they view steroids, they have low testosterone and they require after a great consideration and risk benefit ratios, they require androgen for life. Yet they're young and they will be desirous of having a child or another child. This is very tricky. So how do you give a man testosterone at the same time maintain fertility? There's medications like human chorionic gonadotropin. There's different dose adjustments for androgen. There's even medications like Clomid. But this has to be very personalized and this has to be done by an expert. And of course, for many men that are young on androgens, I work with fertility urologists commonly all over the world actually. So that's very important, the four aspects of management men on testosterone. Ongoing monitoring is going to be a man per man issue, but for the most part, once I initiate a man and he's stable on testosterone, I always check two months, 60 days after starting testosterone, I will make sure that I have another check-in and I repeat labs at that time. And those labs mostly are going to be a CBC, comprehensive metabolic panel, of course, testosterone level, a lipid, hemoglobin A1C, and of course, you have to watch blood pressure. You have to watch the red blood cells. And depending on the man's medical history, like sleep apnea, depression, and so on and so forth, you have to monitor these things independently. And that's what I do. That's why it's really a full-time job, and it's a, it's a great job, and, and I love to do this. I'm so humble for doing this. And every day is like a new day for me. Every man that I take in new, even my men that I've had for over 10 years, every day is a new day. And that's, of course, why I became a healer. Monitoring men with other physicians is crucial. You can't just put a man in testosterone and just think you're gonna manage him as a physician by yourself. I work with cardiologists, primary care doctors, and primary care nurse practitioners all over the United States, urologists, as I said before, and other advanced caregivers, and of course, other family members. We have to have openness and, and discussion. And of course, HIPAA is the, the personal aspect and confidentiality to a man. And that's a big piece in monitoring. I think it has to be very confidential and the patient, the man himself, is really the boss and that's what I tell him. He's the boss, but we have to feel comfortable and work together and that's how I do it. So I hope this video is helpful to patients that may come see me, patients that may uh, see other caregivers in this country or the world for that matter, and I hope other physicians have learned and enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. I'm Mr. Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.